strength and honor. Just don't mention the downtrodden peasantry. We jump straight into the most chivalrous, the most honorable, the bravest of all factions of Total War Warhammer, Br the Kingdom of Bretonia, led by their mighty king, Leon Leoncourt. A powerful melee fighter capable of mounting Beacus, the Hippogriff. He has great battlefield mobility, as well as the capability to cause terror and to fight his enemies both one-on-one -on -one, as well as supporting his armies. He starts off with all of his knightly vows unlocked, an absolutely indispensable upgrade for a faction so heavily reliant on its cavalry. His campaign movement range bonus can never be understated. It is very useful when trying to chase down an enemy army's r rampaging through your fields or just getting that eking out that extra bit of distance on your march. And finally, an increase in aura size for all lords when attacking can help keep your cowardly peasants in line when you need to use them as your anvil to your uh, cavalry's hammer. Finally, his starting roster of Pegasus Knights, Field Trebuchets, and Grail Knights is incredibly potent and can take on any early game challenge with ease. So without further ado, let us follow in the footsteps of Gilles Le, Le, Le Breton and unite all of Bretonia under their great king. So here we are at the start of the Bretonia campaign, playing as the most chivalrous uh, protection racket in all the old world. Um, as the uh, Empire would definitely call it. So really quickly get a disclaimer um, this is obviously from my experiences in very hard legendary uh, so it should apply to lower difficulties as well um, but um, some things might not be as important to prioritize those um, so some things might be a little easier uh, simpler to deal with them say hard or very hard or uh, easy and that sort of stuff um, also, this is not going to be covering Carcass on a Bordolo. I'm going to give those two uh, their own video, uh, only really covering their early game. Not really going to be covering their late game because it's all the same for Bretonia. But uh, gonna, gonna cover, gonna cover their early game, um, and give them some coverage that way. So, uh, going, gonna go straight into the uh, Bretonian comp and uh, uh, pros and cons of playing as Bretonia. Um, and uh, first and foremost, though, gonna go for objectives. Uh, First, uh, we have here uh, getting a thousand chivalry. That is their unique tr uh, trait for then which they get for building battles, researching some technologies, and um, building certain structures. Um, as long as you're winning a lot of battles, is usually attainable. Uh, but you do have to watch out to, for unchivalrous un actions. You don't want to commit too many of them. Um, and then finally, you have to commit, a, complete, and win a final errantry war battle, which is either against chaos all the way up in the chaos wastes up in the uh, north, or against uh, the uh, greenskins all the way down in the. Uh, Southern Badlands. Uh, this does make Bretonia potentially one of the shortest campaigns to complete in the game, uh, which is a good or bad thing depending on what your opinion on that is, uh, whether or not you want a long campaign or not. Um, so, going straight into uh, the pros and cons. Uh, first and foremost, they're forgiving start. Uh, Bretonia has pretty, I think, a, one of the easier starts in the game. Uh, not easiest, but definitely easier. You get uh, first and foremost, your starting position is an entire province, which means you can immediately cast a commandment. And uh, Bretonia has uh, one of the strongest commandments, uh, in my opinion, the strongest commandment in the game, uh, Venerate the Lady, which gives you plus 10 control and uh, reduction in chaos and vampiric corruption of plus 2. So that basically means you're never going to have issues with control in a province, um, or almost never going to have problems. Um, there are a handful of events that can overwhelm this buff. And you do want to watch out for them. One of them will proc immediately on turn two, and that is green skin incursions. And we'll discuss that in a bit uh, once we go over early game things. Uh, from there on, uh, Bretonia also has uh, fairly easy access to Confederation. All their enemies are really only to one side because Norska, especially with the pat new patch, but even before then, Norska is fairly passive. They're not likely to really push into you uh, from the north and cause you too much issue. So you can basically sit tight, build up, um, and, uh, and make, just make sure to wipe out your enemies fairly quickly, and uh, you're basically set. Um, and you have a very straightforward path of confederation, and you don't have to prioritize anything. You can just go straight down south over time. Uh, and confederation is very easy because they have an entire set of technology dedicated to it. Um, they also have uh, free walls, uh, good growth, and solid economy. Uh, between their harbors, which will enable easy trade, as well as farms and... Um, farms and uh, the buildings that upgrade them, windmills and water wheels, they can get a very solid income from the, from the farms. Um, technically you can do tailors. I don't like these because they do produce a slightly less income. Uh, and I'm usually not that concerned with uh, maintaining your peasant economy, but um, that is something you can also use. Um, and they also have very strong growth, uh, especially in their small settlements, plus 40 on level 2 and plus 60 on level 3, which means you can grow quickly and you get free walls at tier 3 on a settlement, uh, which means you don't have to invest in a defensive structure. Um, 
or fortification structure, which is fortunate because you do need two buildings to max out your economy structure, whether you do industry or um, farms. Um, then uh, going on from there, uh, they also the Bretonia does have a few other advantages. Um, their infantry is dirt cheap, and this is very beneficial in early game. Uh, they get a ver very strong early game starting a roster between the knights and the field trebuchets, and they can quickly raise a handful of infantry. They also get a free, uh, because of how cheap it is, and they also have a free uh, starting hero, uh, Damsel of the Heavens, and uh, she can make all your buildings cheaper and provide you with a little bit of magic and morale support on the battlefield, uh, which is definitely indispensable when you're normally going to be using Luwin with your cavalry, so she can support infantry. Um... They also have pretty easy access to early heroes between the Damsel and the uh, Paladin. Um, they have a very strong air force uh, between the Hippogriffs and the Pegasus Knights, and uh, as well as, of course, the mounts for the Lords and Paladins. Um, their cavalry is very st solid. Not, in my opinion, the best in the game, but definitely solid with this, this unique spearhead formation and um, just being very easily accessible. You can get Shock Cav at Tier 2, uh, which no other faction can claim, um, except Vampires if they luck out with a huge battlefield. But otherwise, uh, Knights Errant are available at Tier 2, so you can get them very early on. Um, they also have the Green Knight, who is a free uh, temporary legendary hero you can summon. Uh, and he is immensely powerful in the battlefield. Unbreakable, causes terror, uh, just very, is ethereal, is an immensely powerful, powerful unit. And you can get up to five stacks, five summons or stacks or charges of him over time if you, for every 200 points of chivalry you attain. And he is a very good emergency call in. Um, finally, uh, they have uh, the Blessing of the Lady, which is not something you see here, but if you win enough battles, your army will gain the Blessing of the Lady, which is a 20% physical resistance buff to all units, uh, just like the one that comes in for free on the Grail Knights. Uh, but obviously, this is strong. This is just strong for obvious reasons. 20% uh, physical resistance is great. On the flip side, Bretonia has some very serious problems. Um, first and foremost is chivalry. Um, you have to try to build up your chivalry, and so committing unchivalrous actions is undesirable. Uh, if you also commit too many unchivalrous actions, your lords themselves will start gaining unchivalrous traits, which will reduce your chivalry even further. Uh, if you also don't move around your lords around enough, they will start getting l procrastinator and uh, lazy, which on top of the normal campaign movement penalties and those sorts of things are also reducing your lords. Um, m will also reduce your lords' chivalry that they give you. And uh, sometimes these will proc unfairly. I've gotten it on Bordelo where I took a city with him and then got procrastinated the next turn. And I just, so I'm not entirely sure what the requirements are for these sorts of things, but it doesn't seem particularly fair. Um, and it's definitely something that could be a pain to deal with. Um, anything else? Uh, any, there's a lot of unchivalrous things. W only really winning battles and a handful of technologies will give you chivalry, but uh, raiding, raising human settlements, sacking settlements, uh, ambush stands. Um, releasing prisoners, all of that is considered unchivalrous and will come with the associated penalties. Second of all, Bretonian infantry is terrible and takes a lot of tech to get max out. Normally, this makes their armies very cost inefficient because it's very hard to get armies with a lot of infantry. Uh, stacked on top of the fact that peasant economy can be crippling, uh, even if you don't rely on industry, your, um, up your uh, infantry replenishment rates will face tank if you don't um, your, uh, inf your infantry replenishment will face tank if you overstep your business economy too much. Um, and that just is a problem. Their infantry is already pretty bad as is. They route very easily, um, with the exception of uh, battle pilgrims. And uh, so you will usually want to bring in a Grail Relic or a Paladin to encourage them. And uh, it, it's just very, their infantry is just very poor uh, in general. Their only real advantage is the fact that they're cheap. Um, and of course, that goes into peasant economy being a problem as well. You simply can't field enough armies, so unlike Empire. Uh, their garrisons are very bad, so it's not worth investing in a garrison building, in my opinion, ever. Um, their heroes are pretty lackluster. They do get Lore of Life, which is the one huge saving grace, but otherwise, Lore of Beasts and Heavens is kind of mediocre. And uh, their paladins are basically worse Empire captains. Um, the only benefits, really, are that you can get them early on, and you can get several of them pretty easily. Um, their armies are very cost inefficient because you're so dependent on cavalry. Um, your armies will usually be about 50 50 split early game, and it might move on to a straight cavalry comp by late game. Um, and that is obviously very expensive to field. And uh, the, they're very susceptible to lord sniping. And this is because their cavalry is exorbitantly expensive if you don't have all your vows. There's three knightly vows, uh, each one reducing the upkeep by 66% uh, for a unit, so by two thirds. Um, 
for example, unit that like Knights of the Realm that costs 250 upkeep now will cost 750 if I lose Lurnkar and don't get a Lord who doesn't have that uh, that quest that vow the knight, the uh, the uh, Knight's vow. So that can be potentially crippling. If you get a Lord assassinated, you can lose thousands of gold in a turn, a turn. You might be forced to scrap an entire army if you aren't able if you weren't high enough on money to absorb that hit. So that can be very painful. Um, and uh, finally, their army skills and techs are absolutely terrible, in my opinion. Um, they have a handful of uh, faction-specific or countering faction-specific technologies on this tree. Sorry, this is for Confederation. But uh, here they have for green skins, for Norse skins, for wood elves, which I wouldn't recommend because you want to be friendly with wood elves. But all of these, I absolutely hate tech that is against a specific faction. Uh, in my opinion, it's very lackluster. Um, uh, it's just very limiting, and so it means that your armies are not. And um, the technology over here only affects peasant mobs, which are terrible. And the uh, lord skills are pretty lackluster too. They're definitely not comparable to the bonuses Empire and uh, Bretonian generals provide, or not sorry, Empire and like Greenskin or Vampire generals provide. The only decent ones here, in my opinion, are Peasants' Duty and uh, Engines of War, which upgrade your artillery and skirmishers. Uh, but unfortunately, especially the skirmishers are pretty lackluster units to begin with. So though it is an upgrade, it's nothing amazing. Um, so from there on out, we can go into the early game with Bretonia. Um, there are two methods of playing early game, a very early game Bretonia, like the first 20 to 30 turns. Both of them would involve going for Confederation. In my opinion, it's not worth it at all to go for economic upgrades initially. Uh, the bonuses are not high enough to justify them, and you need to Confederate as quickly as you can. Um, my first recommendation for which you can be ready first is Artois. And uh, this this will also give you some chivalry. It does improve your heroes a little bit early on with the chivalry code. Um, and it's simply just nifty. It'll keep giving you more and more chivalry as well. And of course, improving your relations. Make sure to try to uh, get non-aggression packs and trade with all the Bretonians before that so that you can be getting constant stream of income in from them. Um, now, there are two methods of playing Bretonian. One is the long myth drawn out build-up method, and the other is a uh, slower or a more instant, sorry. And aggressive method. Uh, the aggressive method, uh, the, at turn 2 you're going to get hit by Greenskin Incursions. This is a minus 20 penalty to uh, public order. There's nothing you can do to undo this besides... Or you won't be able to counteract this. The only way you can undo this is by attacking Grungsin and wiping out the Skull Smashers. This is a nice... It's fortunate that if it's Bretonia that you actually have this option. If you play as Bordolo or Carcassonne, you're basically stuck defending your home province. Because you will not be able to shut down... Uh, it's not you're not likely to be able to shut down the orcs and grungs in before then, um, and you'll simply have to wait it out. But as Bretonia, you can move immediately and wipe them out on the second turn. So if if we're going for this early game wipeout, what I would recommend is you take Leon and you need to be. So this is actually something I'm gonna say real quick. Um, I over almost overstepped there a little bit. It's okay. It doesn't. Um, you make sure you move right to the edge, uh, and you move your damsel right to the edge. And what you do is uh, you get you get her right on the edge of the border here, and you deploy her. Now you quickly build the stables, and you level up your uh, or you don't bother with the rally field, sorry. And you quickly rank out four swordsmen. Now as you can see, this is or four men armors. This is obviously pushing you over the edge of your peasant economy, but uh, you'll be able to absorb that for a single turn at least. On turn two, you go at Grungzin, you take it, you raise it. Turn three you fall back to Bretonia, get back to Corona as quick as you can. I do not recommend going after Marienburg immediately because your army is very poorly equipped for sieges. You'll probably take very heavy losses. Marienburg has Halberdiers in the garrison, which will trash your cavalry pretty heavily. Um, and crossbows will do amazing work against your unshielded infantry. Um, so in general, I would not recommend trying to storm Marienburg immediately. You fall back, you uh, confederate Artois, take their you most likely stack of an army and you then go in to deal with Marienburg. Uh, if you are otherwise you can reduce the stack a little bit so that you're not taking too much of a peasant economy penalty and push in uh, from the flank afterwards. Make sure to scrap your peasants immediately after um, after conquering uh, Grungzint. You really don't need them. Uh, they're just there for cannon fodder. Only go after Grungzint though if you're comfortable or if you don't want to farm the rebellions, and if you're comfortable taking on or with cycle charging, Bretonia is a very micro-intensive faction because they are so cavalry dependent, and especially shock cavalry dependent. Shock cavalry takes a lot of babysitting to function properly because if you are not on top of it, they will get caught out in the open, and they will, or they will get caught by the enemy, surrounded and slaughtered. Uh, even Grail Knights will fall very quickly because their armor, armor on Bretonian cavalry, unlike Empire Cav, which is a bit more hybridized, 
Bretonian shock cav is not tanky. They will fall or not as not really all that tanky at all. They will fall apart very quickly, even to non-armor piercing infantry. Uh, if tied down and bogged down in a long extended fight, uh, so you need to be on top of your micro. Um, you also need to be wary of your infantry, which tends to break and flee at the smallest state of trouble. Um, and if you're not comfortable with that, or if you just want to farm rebellions, you sit tight for about 20 turns and slowly build up. You can federate Artois, you can federate Leonis. Uh, you might even take Musion first. You might take a piece with Marienburg for a little bit. Uh, go crush uh, the Skull Smashers. Um, and then after you've built up enough, probably taken Bastogne, taken Bordelow. You go back and you take Marienburg. You will want Marienburg no matter what, in my opinion, as if you play as Bretonia. No matter which Bretonia you play, because the income is so huge. Otherwise, if you're doing this uh, quick uh, conquest strat, you take these guys out, you take the Skull Smashers out, fall back, reco recover, Café Artois, and then backdoor Marienburg, and come in from the north. I uh, do try to bait away their armies, because they might have a 20 stack here, so you might have to do some fancy footwork to bait the armies away. But otherwise, uh, it should be doable. And once you take Marienburg, even if you don't have Gorsal, you have the main source of income. And eventually, you'll be uh, with scaling raids and whatnot coming in from the north, you will be able to take Gorsal. Marienburg's armies are going to get wiped out eventually. Otherwise, you can go wipe them out yourself. Um, a small little note: um, if you get once you get Alberic the Bordelow, um, it's good to move him into Marienburg. He has a special ability that improves uh, income from ports in the local region by uh, 150% when it's maxed out. You will have to leave an army in Marienburg anyway to defend it um, from Norskins and Chaos. Might as well leave Albrecht there and uh, farm uh, money that way. Um, obviously, if you do the go for the long route, you will be able to farm the, rebellion the Orc Rebellions for a while, and that way you will be able to earn some money and additional income that way. Um, my um, if you're doing this fast strat, a good way to deal with Musion is to not fight him initially, just take Artois, and then Confederate Leoness, Confederate Bastogne, and Pincer Musion for both sides. Um, that'll uh, give you, you can immediately use the armies that you get for free to crush Musion very, very quickly. Um, and uh, that's just very, in my opinion, useful. Um,. Leave Carcassonne for last. Paravon is not a bad pick, but do leave Carcassonne for last because you want to, they, to use them as a buffer against the Stalian Wood Elves, both of whom are often very hostile to you. Um, do, tr if, do be prepared to fight and crush Uh They will often be invited to war against you by the Wood Elves. And uh, if they are not friendly with you, it is often worthwhile to simply raise everything there. Do not try to be friendly with them. Do not try to trade. They will, they will often backstab you for the Wood Elves. Um, so be very wary of that. Uh, early game army comps, once again, will most likely consist of a mix of infantry and cavalry. You can definitely start slipping more towards Knights Errant uh, very early on, that you get access to them pretty quickly. And once you get tier 3 as Bretonia, you're basically set. Granted, your infantry isn't the best, and you do want to get tier 4 for foot squares, but you do have access to trebuchets at that point. You have access to Knights of the Realm. At some place, you should be able to build peasant bowmen with pox arrows and fire arrows. And most importantly, Knights of the Realm and questing knights, both of whom uh, can dish out immense amounts of hurt. Um, and they are, they're not quite on par with, uh, Grail, Gu they're definitely not on par with Grail Guardians for tankiness, or Grail Knights for shock, cav, um, and obviously the Royal Hippogriffs and Pegasus Knights are very strong, but this is adequate, the tier 3 units are adequate for Bretonia. Um, and so yeah, that's basically, those are your two options, you either go for very aggressive strat, or you go slow and steady, and either way, by around turn 50 to 60, Maybe seventy at max. Uh, you should control all of Bretonia. You should have, or you should have Carcassonne confederated. Uh, that's Carcassonne's like down here, but you should have Carcassonne confederated, and be uh, ready to go from there. Um, once you have Bretonia confederated, make sure to take your time. You might have raids coming in from Norska this stage. You might have war. Uh, you might have uh, Warriors of Chaos, Warherd of Chaos coming in from the flanks. You might. You will have to defend against those. Be ready to have at least two, maybe three armies just defending this area here. Um, do try to be friendly with the Empire so you can use them as a buffer. Um, try to get be friends with the Wood Elves. Wood Elves are not someone you want to fight against. They're very annoying enemy to have. Um, they can potentially backstab you, though usually they're not that aggressive. And just leave a s skeleton force around Carcassonne um, to defend in the case the Stalia backstabs you. Uh, is often what will happen. Uh, if you don't have any issues with uh, 
if you don't have any issues with the chaos and scaling, you might be able to simply push south and go after um, go after the uh, Estalians. So without further ado, we're going to hop into a late game situation and uh, discuss some of the late game options when uh, playing as Bretonia. So here we are in a bit of a late game situation. Uh, you can see that it's only turn 99 and the campaign is already over. And this I think shows really how quickly the uh, campaign can be finished. Um, Bordelow is over here. I didn't leave him in Marienburg because him and Schilfroy over here were chasing after the uh, Chaos Invaders and trying to catch them. And they've gotten on boats now and they're trying to flee. Um, I only have four armies on the field. Uh, Fan Chantress over here, these two up there, and then uh, Lewin was over here completing the uh, final War of Enter Entry. Um, and here you can see what a bit of a late game comp looks like. For uh, If you're doing a cavalry heavy comp, here's Lewin's. A uh, mix of questing knights, uh, knights of the realm, and obviously the carried over units from early game, and some trebuchets. If you're worried about defending your trebuchets, you can always leave some questing knights at them to defend them. And then a mix of paladins and a, obviously a uh, damsel of life. Uh, and then there's the uh, Green Knight, because why not? Free, easy, free unit to get. Um, and if you're trying to do an infantry army, a uh, mix of pull arms and foot squares is very decent. Otherwise, you can always throw in uh, some um, battle pilgrims. Probably more foot squares is better against Chaos, but these guys are cheap and only take one turn to recruit, which is why I built so many of them. Because um, I was trying to build up cow infantry very quickly to defend. Um, as you can see, one thing I wanted to touch on is th just how massive the effect can be from a global uh, from uh, global events for Bretonia. Uh, unlike other factions, where it's usually pretty minor, uh, these can be very significant with massive growth penalties, recruitment pe uh, increase costs or upkeep cost increases or decreases, uh, reduced reductions in construction cost or uh, protected citizens, which gives you massive boost to infantry. So it's very all very heavily favorable or unfavorable one way or another. Uh, so definitely always be on a watch out for these. Always watch out for these. Quickly going over the wars and errantry, uh, you should be able to complete this with a tier 3 army. Obviously, and like I said, tier 3 is perfectly adequate for Bretonia. Questing Knights are a unit you'll probably be using straight into late game unless you go for a very air heavy army. Um, because Grail Guardians, who is your alternative melee cav, are absolutely atrocious at doing damage. They hit like my noodles, so you always want some Questing Knights. Uh, Grail Knights are basically a straight upgrade from Knights of the Realm, but once you get um, Favor of the Fey on your Knights of the Realm, they're not that much worse than Grail Guardians or Grail Knights. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, they are still worse, but they're just not that much worse. Um, you have two options for the Knights of the, for the Wars of Errantry. You can either go into the Southern Badlands here and go fight against Orcs, or go all the way up north uh, into the Chaos Waste and fight against Chaos. Personally, uh, if, you're, if you're worried about spoilers, go ahead and skip uh, about a minute or two. Um, if you're otherwise... Um, for So... Uh, You'll be fighting four waves uh, of enemies, um, which will include all four either Greenskin Lords or all four Chaos Lords. I would recommend doing the Greenskin one. This doesn't have much to do with the difficulty of the actual battle. Uh, the actual battle against Greenskins is not really any easier. Um, you fight against, instead of fighting against Greenskins, or in, Greenskins are a little easier to route and their unit quality is going to be a little lower. They're going to come in with more trash units than Chaos will. But um, at the same time, there's going to be a lot more of them. Uh, they can get more artillery. Uh, their lords are still very potent and all that sort of stuff. On the flip side, uh, chaos will get fewer units, and their lords are still very, fairly, very strong. And uh, in the end, you're going to be fighting about a 30 to 40 stack of units, uh, all told, uh, from what I can think. And um, you will get some reinforcements. Uh, y you'll get some reinforcements right away and uh, later into the battle, at least in the Greenskin case. Up in the north, I, I forget if uh, in the uh, Chaos Wastes, uh, it's been a while since I did that one, but I think you should also, you also could definitely get reinforcements, may just maybe not as many. The key problem, though, with the uh, doing Chaos Wastes is that it's such a way from home. Uh, if you go from Bretonia to do your quest here against the Greenskins, um, you basically go through all friendly territory, has to fight maybe a green sack, though you can raise Gorgazan, go over here and do, do your fight. You can only really invest in one army into it. If you're going to do the Chaos Waste one, you'll be fighting through a raised territory that's Chaos Corrupted, which will be slowing you down because you constantly have to enter in camp stance. Uh, you might have to fight your way past Warhead of Chaos, Chaos Proper, um, and then march through to Chaos Waste where you'll be taking massive amounts of attrition uh, before finally reaching your objective. Um, 
which is just very inconvenient and uh, very tedious. And you're going to have to invest multiple armies into that sort of deal, which you really don't have to do here with the greenskin one. And that, that's the main reason I would recommend that, uh, doing greenskins over uh, chaos. Nothing to do with battle difficulty. Um, if you want, for the uh, for my kind of structure comp, you can see I didn't prioritize taking up too high. I was basically trying to get up to tier three so that I can max out my economy. In some cases, you can see I went with uh, normal industrial buildings. In others, uh, going with uh, farms. But uh, all in all, investing in uh, very heavily into economy and not concerning myself with anything past tier three really. Um, it's expensive. And they're not uh, even grand lights aren't that useful. Uh, the only tier four things I really got was the uh, royal barracks, just so I could get some foot squires out. Um, but otherwise, you can see massive investment in farms and uh, industrial buildings just to get that income going. Um, otherwise, yeah, you can see, see my composition there. Uh, so, going in short, uh, just trying to cover recap what we did. You have two options in early game. You can either strike out immediately for Mer for uh, Grungzin, fall back. Uh, recuperate your losses, uh, confederate Artois, Pincer Marienburg, wipe them off the map and get massive income from that, and then kind of confederate your way down, take Musion and that sort of stuff. Otherwise you can go slow and steady, crush the constant uprisings from the greenskin raids, um, and confederate your way southward, eventually crush Grungzint with multiple armies, uh, maybe get peace with Marienburg, take Musion, take Bastogne, um, Remember to build up your economy. Remember you get free walls, so don't really invest in garrison buildings uh, unless you really want them, but I would not recommend them. Uh, don't really worry about getting your uh, unit producing structures past tier 3, uh, for most part, because your knights are f at tier 3 are fine, both the knights of the realm and the questing knights. Uh, do remember to produce heroes. While your heroes are lackluster, you can have a lot of them, uh, which is very nice. Make sure to use your ex uh, legendary lords. If you can get Bordelow and Marienburg, you can get massive amounts of income there. Um, the Marienburg Harbor, if leveled all the way up, is 2,000, so you can get e easily be making over 4,500 off, off Marienburg alone. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Make sure to invest in armor piercing for chaos, because otherwise, and make sure you hone your micro for uh, cycle charging with Bretonia, because that is very important. Otherwise, do try to be fairly peaceful with everybody, because you will struggle to defend a bit, because your armies are so cost inefficient that you can't field that many armies. So do try to be friendly with Empire if you can, be friendly with Wood Elves if you can. With most of the dwarves, if you can, though, Karak's Zifflin will often backstab you. Um, and yeah, uh, that's basically it. Try to build up your chivalry. Don't don't burn through it too quickly. And uh, then if you're deciding which quest to make easy to be easy, you can say I'm at war with the dwarves. That was because they were actually allied with the top mounts. Um, but then if you're wondering what's the better pick for uh, quests, uh, do the greenskin one for the final war of Errantry. So, once again, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did... Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. Uh, I definitely appreciate it, and, it'll, um, and that means that uh, you'll get update dates whenever I publish more of these guides. Uh, Bordelow and Carcassonne will be coming very shortly, because they have a much... Uh, I'm, I'll just be covering their early game. Um, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for more quick match gameplay, uh, more campaign gameplay, um, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you have any comments, criticism, any ideas, anything you think I missed in this campaign overview, any uh, things that have worked out for you for when it's playing, when playing as Bretonia, be sure to post them down in the comments. Uh, people will uh, that will mean other people can see them, other people can get ideas on what to do and what could work. Because uh, I'm sure that I haven't covered everything here. This was meant to be a kind of a rundown. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, post in the comments. Um, once again, I appreciate you all for watching, and uh, Wyvern out.